Alright, so T cells are developed in two different ways. We have immature T cells and mature T cells. Mature T cells are when they are originally created. Um, T cells work just like B cells, where they have a BDJ organization. So they have random coding, kind of like a lottery, where they have a bunch of different exons excised and put together into this random combination that recognizes certain proteins or factors inside the body. So when T cells are first created, they have this immature T cell, which just has an TCR, which is the um, T cell re uh, Recep receptor or recognizer. <laughs> Uh, and it doesn't have this coactivator that's required for it to cause an immune response. Wait, what's a coactivator? Coactivator is just another site that binds to a B cell or a um, regular cell in the body. Engine presenting cell. Engine presenting cell, either one. And it causes the immune response by telling the cell to create antibodies or causing a response in the actual um, T cell from whatever protein it's detecting, causing from that antigen. So in immature, it doesn't have that coact uh, the coactivator. Without the coactivator, it can't send that signal, and it recognizes it as um, essentially being self. And that self-recognition shows that that's something that should be in the body, and it signals to the cell that we don't need that T cell because we don't need an immune response in on that antigen, and it kills itself. So without that coactivator, when it's immature, it causes cell death in the T cell, and that allows, um, or doesn't allow, um, autoimmune disease. So once they're actually matured, they do get this receptor, the coactivator, which then can bind to the ABC, so that MHC on the B cell or whatever antigen we're looking at. And then that can make a few different kinds of T cells. You get uh, cytotoxic T cells, which go to regular cells and bind to MHC class two. Or you can have helper T cells and T rays that go to MHC class one, and those were discussed with. Um, Wait, you said these go to MHC. What? Yeah, cytotoxic go to MHC class one. Okay, and helper go to two. Yeah, MHC class one is, is presented on all cell surfaces of all cells. MHC class two is only presented on um, immune cells, so B cells, cells. Yeah. and. Wait, so why do you have MHC class two right there? Sorry. Right. This. It was that's, the receptor, but it's yeah, actually uh, it's TCR. TCR. Okay. So that's the site that actually recognizes MHC class 2 or MHC class 1. For okay. cytotoxic T cells, it's actually only looking for um, MHC class 1. Okay. Because that's what's on regular cells. Okay. So when it detects an antigen that's been presented by MHC class 1, and I think you already talked about that. No. No. Oh. Yeah. So <laughs> MHC class 1 and class 2 are antigen presenting cells. Or surfaces on um, the outside of the cell. It essentially breaks down whatever antigen it sees. So um, just in regular cell, it's constantly taking in oh, different... Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but for class one, it's presenting stuff that's in the cell. That's already inside. Yeah, yeah. But um, you got to go over the basis of it. Yeah, no, I already talked about it, too. So you already went over endocytosis? So... Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. so... Sorry, I wasn't listening. <laughs> God. <laughs> so I don't need to explain that. Well, MHC class 1 just goes over, it, it's just actually what's already in the cell. So it's processing everything in the ER, sending it out to MHC class 1, and it's presenting what antigens are inside of that cell. So if you have it infected with a virus or some sort of mutation, it's going to present all of that. And if you get a random match with a cytotoxic T cell, which has the same random combination as the regular T cell, you're going to have that BDJ recombination, uh, it's going to recognize that as non-self, and it's going to cause an immune response. So there's two different ways that the cytotoxic T cell interacts with the cell with the defect. It can um, both ways cause apoptosis, but it has two methods to do this. Um, the first method is there is a fast and fast receptor on both the T cell and the um, any cell actually. So it's a fast ligand that's attached to a uh, transmembrane protein on the T cell. And that activates fast L, which is the receptor on all cells, surfaces. And that causes a caspase cascade. And this caspase cascade is a bunch of um, proteases that essentially cleave each other and cause this large cascade. And then those proteases go into the cell and start destroying the uh, actual things that the cell needs to survive. And by doing that, it eventually causes apoptosis in the cell.
Um, the other method it, method it can do without the receptor is the T cell can release an uh, enzyme called perforin, which actually opens up pores inside of the cell, creating these spaces. And then in those spaces, it can release serine. Enzyme? No. It's called something else. Um, Serine something, <laughs> and also it's, it's also called, serine. huh? No, it's called something else. It's serine something. Yeah. Serine and genzyme B. This also causes a cascade, cascade, and that also causes apoptosis in the cell.